Okay, so as I promised, we will be um, going over one section at a time now for the QuickBook online certification exam. And of course, the first section I'm gonna go over is section one, QuickBook solution for clients. And just as a reminder, the QuickBook online certification exam is in eight sections. There's six to 13 questions per section. You get three attempts to pass the entire exam. And you don't have to repeat any sections that you've passed already in your future attempts. You need to have an 80% in each section to pass. So let's look at some of this. 80%, um, if you have a six question section, you need to get at least five of those correct. And you only have the uh, ability to get one wrong. Of course, you're going to aim to get all six correct. If it's a 12 or 13 question, you need to get at least 10 correct. So be aware of how many you uh, need to get correct in that particular. And they'll tell you how many questions are in that section as you're taking the exam. Now, as I said, there was three attempts to pass. So on the first time of taking the exam, if let's say you pass only three sections, six, seven, and eight, that means you would have to retake one through five in your second attempt. Say on the second attempt, you get one, two, and three correct then. So now you only need to do four and five for that third attempt. If that third attempt comes and you've still failed one or more of those sections, you're going to have to take a 60-day downtime so that you can revisit and retrain on the topics in the section that you have failed. Again, you do not have to repeat any sections that you've already passed. The other thing I try to tell um, my students, be aware, you're, they're not going to accept it until you click accept. I forgot what the, the link it actually says, but I think it says submit exam. So you're not going to it's not going to go through until you actually click submit. So if you get, you know, if you're doing it at home and you have a small child or if you're doing it at work and during your lunch hour, you know, your boss might walk in. If you click out of it and you haven't submitted that section, it's not going to take. So just be aware of that. All right. So I discussed this in the um, exam intro video, but just to revisit it in your QBOA account on the left hand navigation section, there's a pro advisor tab. If you click on it, there's two sections. There's benefits and training. Go into training and you scroll down a little, you'll see the section that covers the different um, features that are available to you in the QuickBook solution, uh, the QuickBook uh, certification exam. And there are training modules. So you have the self-paced training modules, as well as they'll post any upcoming webinars that you can um, apply for. And it's probably be one in the next month or two. And then there's also the every six months, there's the conference, the online conference where you have interaction with the trainer, as well as you go into the lounge and you can network and talk to other pro advisors that are taking the exam or that have taken the exam and might give you advice. So I really encourage everybody to do that process before taking the exam. Today, I'm going to be doing a presentation covering the topics just in this section one, QuickBooks solution for clients. So let's get started. Different type of clients. So you're going to sit down with a client and you first thing you want to know is what type of business do you have? So there's service business, retail, e-commerce, merchandising, and manufacturing. So service business is like a lawyer, a doctor, uh, a bookkeeper, an outsourced bookkeeper that works for themselves. Um, retail e-commerce is either you have a store that your customers go into or you have an online store that they can purchase or they can have both. Um, merchandising is like Walmart, uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, Target, and manufacturing business has many steps to it, detailed in the accounting process, um, that if you go into a bookkeeping or accounting for manufacturing business, you want to make sure you know what you're doing at all stages. Um, what type of client monitors inventory and sales on a regular basis to avoid out of stock situations? So this is the client that purchases goods to sell and wants to make sure that they have those goods stocked properly so you avoid unhappy customers. That would be a retail e-commerce client. Adding a new client. So if, the one thing I love about uh, Intuit is not only do not only do they have the QBO webinars, they also have a firm of the uh, future.com, which allows uh, pro advisors to post blogs and articles. And some of them are really great if you're researching certain topics, especially if it's a section you keep failing and you're like, oh, I don't know much about adding a new client. There'll be an article in, in the firm of the future that will kind of go over uh, the topic in detail. So here's one. And this actually is going to cover like a couple of questions that I'm going to ask, but that are also on the exam. So this kind of just goes over, well, 
what if the client doesn't have QuickBooks online yet? You know, what would be the, the best way to handle that? Um, and then how do you add them to your list? What kind of discounts can you offer to your clients? So they're, they're listed here. We're gonna look at wholesale discount in a few minutes. Um, then they talk about the, um, okay, the users, the team access, once you do um, set up their accounts. Okay, and then this is if you set up an account for a new user, um, or a, a customer already has Kubio and they have want to put in your email and ask for you to be their accountant. So if you remember that sample company we looked at, um, I forgot what uh, Craig's landscape and design in the navigation pan, all the way in the bottom, there was a my accountant tab. If you clicked on that and you found a bookkeeper account that you want to use, the first thing that comes up is what is this person's email? So we can send an invitation to them. So you type in their email and it sends an invite. And then this is what it looks like on our end when we open that email. And so we would click the accept invite. And then after that, we would have to log into QuickBooks online and with, you know, to get to access our QBOA um, to link with that customer. So there might be a question on the test asking you um, for the process. And it probably might have a missing step. So maybe a question might be, well, after you click accept invitation, what's the next thing you do? Well, the next thing you do is you sign in to QBOA with your email or user ID. So you wanna make sure you have notes on this topic, most definitely before you get started on the exam. Um, so if a client tells you they're interested in starting a new QBOA account, what is the best way you should handle this? Well, if you read that link, it tells you the best thing you should do is you handle the setup process for them. And then they give you several reasons why that's best. And, and the number one being that you are selecting the best subscription level for that client's needs. Okay. Accepting an invite. Oh, so we just looked at that. <laughs> So um, a client can invite, you know, put your email and invite you. And the question here is what are the steps for accepting it? And I have that article there for you. Um, and they might ask you for what's the initial step or what's the last step. If you have all the steps written down in your notes before you take the exam, it doesn't matter how the question is phrased, you'll have the answer. Um, subscription options. So you should be able to identify the differences between them. So there's five different subscription options. I went over them a little in the QBO uh, intro video. There's self-employed, simple start, essentials, plus, and advanced. Self-employed being the least amount of features, advanced being the most amount of features. And if you click on there, I go into detail about the advanced. Let's look at these questions. So your client wants to track sales. You're sitting down with the client and say, well, the most important thing to me is I'm tracking sales. What subscription option do you think is best for me? Well, you would know the answer to that at all subscription levels track sales. So you would need more information from that client before you make a final decision of what subscription level would be best for them. But your answer to the question would be all subscription um, levels track sales. What feature is unique to QBO Advance? Well, there's several features, but one that is a real popular one right now is that you have three account users, 25 organizational users, and customized user permission. There's one section that goes over that in detail, the customized user permission. That's where the master user sets up limitations for the other users, for these other 25 organizational um, employees or subcontracts that are coming into your QuickBook Online, what access do they have? So one of the um, sections that has sensitive um, vital information is payroll. So that might be one of the things you might opt out of a user being able to have access to. And uh, the self-paced um, module goes in great detail on that topic as well. Wholesale billing. So remember when we looked at an article and we saw that there were different um, discount uh, options for QBOA users to um, use for potential clients. So wholesale billing is an option for QBOA users to give their clients a discounted rate that 50% off, or they can pay their entire bill for a certain period as a sign on incentive. So as I said, you might have a, a client that's on the fence. I don't know if I want to switch over from desktop to online. And you say to them, well, you know what, I'll give you, you know, for a year, 50% off, I'll even pay for your first three months. 
Now, remember, if this is a self-employed, we're talking about a dollar a month at this point. So it's not that much out of your pocket to bring on a new client. So who pays the cost for the wholesale billing? I think we know this, us, the QBOA user, the accountant practice or the bookkeeping practice that owns that QBOA account. They're the ones that get billed and have to pay it, but then they determine how much they're gonna bill their client in turn for a part of it, all of it, or none of it. Maybe you might say you're so interested in getting this client um, and they're gonna get an advanced uh, uh, account and you know you're gonna use them for years to come, you might pay for the whole 12 months, that's up to you. Um, the opening balance equity account, what is this? So when you create a new QBO account and you're inputting their inventory and you're inputting their supplies and their, everything they already have, because this is an existing business, everything that you're putting in is going into that capital account. But the default account that they use initially is that opening balance equity account that you later will have to make a journal entry to put into the appropriate account. So if it's a, a sole proprietorship, it would be that person's capital account. If it is a corporation, it would be common stock. So you would have to then put that into it. That would be your final step. But there are sometimes uh, common errors in this area. So I put two links in there for you to look. It also is covered in detail in the training section. This is a topic you want to be well versed in because there might be one or two questions on the exam on that topic. I could have come up with a question for you without, because I can only remember one and it's so precise that I don't want to get in trouble with into it. But if anybody else watching this video would like to pop it in the comments, please do so. Um, apps, that is another huge uh, topic. I would say maybe 25% of the questions um, would be on apps. And I just gave you one when I said, uh, what are the differences between the different um, subscriptions? And I said, well, you sign on for a QBO advanced um, subscription, you get the Fathom app. I just gave you that one. Let's look at another type of um, question. Uh, so QuickBook Online ecosystem is the new app feature. Okay. And so Intuit has improved many third-party apps to work alongside QBO um, users. When you go to the app tab in the navigation pan on the left, so you're going as a small business, you'll click on it. It'll say apps recommended for you. Or even if you're a QBOA user, it'll tell you apps recommended for you. But if you're a QBOA, you'll also have your client apps there. What do apps do? They add additional functionality. They streamline workflow processes. So remember that. Remember that, because that very may well be a question on your test. Uh, what does the QuickBook Online ecosystem do? It provides apps that streamline workflow processes more efficiently for your company. They also reduce data entry, so it eliminates the amount of times you might have. So if you have a, a, a banking app that sends in a bank feed, then that will eliminate some of that um, data entry that you're doing. And then there's the security and separation of duty. So you might have an independent contractor or someone that works for you that puts in work orders or whatever it may be, and you don't want them to have access to sensitive um, company information. So you might use a specific app that allows that independent contractor to send information to you without being able to access your actual QBO account or QBO account. Apps continued, how do we access them and what are the requirements? So in accessing them, I just said a few minutes ago, they're on the navigation pane. You'll go down to the apps tab. And if you're if you're wanting to look at your client's apps, you go down to the apps tab, you click on it in your client's account, and then you click client app and you'll be able to see all of their apps. What are the requirements for these third-party companies that post their apps? Well, there's a link down there for you to look at a more uh, detailed description of it um but the main uh things the 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 third party company wants to make sure is that the apps work properly they're visually there on the list and that when you click on it they work properly so they undergo various testing to make sure that there are no glitches and they're also these third party companies are not allowed any access to any personal or client information if they break any of these rules then they obviously will no longer be available for clients so that is all I've covered for this section. If you have any uh, questions that you would like to add, please add them in uh, the question area. And I will also add them to my description so that future viewers will be aware of those questions. Um, so the next video I'll be doing is section two. I hope you're looking forward to it. Thank you.